Nigeria Center for Disease Control published coronavirus situation report for the month of August reveals that majority of Nigerians who contracted COVID-19 so far did not have relevant travel history or exposure to another individual with the virus, meaning that the origin of their infection is unknown. On Sunday, 304 coronavirus infections were recorded in Nigeria, the lowest number in at least two weeks. Since Friday, the nation has been recording cases below 500. The latest figure brings the total number of infections in the country to 44,433. But according to the NCDC report, over 70% of confirmed cases are from unknown sources that contact tracers could not tie back to likely community sources such as spouses, co-workers, or neighbors. They cannot also be traced to persons with travel history, putting a strain on efforts towards identifying specific individuals with exposure risks. And joining us live now is Dr. Flora Mwagagbo, public health specialist. Thank you, doctor, for joining us this morning. Morning. Thank now, you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, looking at this report about how many infected persons are unable to trace the source of their infections, what do you think is then responsible for this? Um, I like to say it's rather obvious. We are almost, we're living almost normal lives right now. People are everywhere. Banks are open, work, the economy has opened up. So every people are mingling. It is, I think it would be, it would not be wise of us to say that we do not quite know that um, there's a high level of community transmission because everybody's mingling with each other. And sadly, we are not taking the necessary measures to reduce infection, wearing masks and maintaining physical distance, despite the fact that we need to do the things we need to do. So it's it's really it's really not um, rocket science to sit, to see that um, community transmission is seriously ongoing. And um, if we're waiting to look, if we're waiting to find people with um, histories history of travel, history of contact with someone who has had COVID, when everybody is probably having contact with someone who has had COVID, then mm -hmm. I don't think we're looking in the right direction. The truth right. of the matter is the disease is around us, and we are mingling with it, and we are not taking the necessary measures. I mean that's quite unfortunate because now with this recent report and continuing easing of the lockdown across the country, it essentially means that the community spread will increase. Where does this leave us? Right now, community spread will increase. Our best bet to reduce infection would be to take the necessary non-pharmaceutical measures, in, which are wearing masks and maintaining physical distancing, and of course, hand washing. But Unless we do that, we will not achieve much. Right as it is, it, there's, a, there's a high level of personal responsibility that lies with us. I get worried when I see the way people move around. I have had a good number of people around me, family members who came down with COVID. Every day I say to myself, um, and I mean, this is not kind of th thoughts that we like to have in Nigeria, but the truth of the matter is we never know when we would become infected. So we are hoping that our immunity will be able to stand the test of time if and when that happens. But I must, I must take my own, I must do the needful, which is wear my mask and maintain physical distance when I go out. If we do this, if we do these very minimal things, I can tell you that we will reduce the, um, the transmission rate. COVID, the, the new coronavirus right now, requires a new body. It requires new hosts to be able to maintain its life cycle, to continue to live on. And if we continue to give it those hosts by intermingling at such close, you know, close distance, then we are just not going to be helping ourselves. Rather, we'll be helping the virus to do, to live on more. <laughs> That's what I like to say, to continue its life cycle and propagate its um, generations. So we really need to do what we need to do. Yeah. the basic things, and we're not doing them. Dr. Flora, I mean, you have nailed it there, but despite the uptick of community transmission, Nigeria has lagged in testing people who showed uh, sy symptoms of the disease. What can be done to ramp up testing? So Nigeria is not the only country lagging behind, in quotes, when it comes to testing. Several other countries are, and Nigeria, 
has even more population than many other countries. The truth is, I see a lot of effort going on regarding testing. Is it, is it, is it the best we can do? No. Is it much better than what we were doing? Yes. However, we continue to have a whole, we, our, 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 our population is a lot, and we continue to have new infections every day. I, I foresee a situation that no, I mean, even if, we, if we, even if we keep ramping up testing, which I know is happening, it will not stop, the, it will not stem the transmission. What will stem the transmission alongside testing, testing will only reveal those who have, who have the, the, the disease. And it's, but even without testing, the truth of the matter is, even without testing, we can, we can begin to do what we need to do. And then when people come down with the illness, when they are tested, then we will still need to continue to do what we need to do, which mm -hmm. is isolate them and then, of course, you know, keep them, keep them from transmitting to somebody else. But I'm not so sure at this point now. I'm honestly, I've looked at it and I'm saying to myself, the testing is not the problem. It is the new infections that are the problem. All right. Uh, Dr. Flora, it's also a bit worrying. Uh, I mean, I don't know. If you move around Lagos, for instance, you would notice that even the wearing of masks uh, has significantly reduced. Uh, people still move together, mingling, as you have said it. I'm wondering what sort of communication do we need to put out again to reiterate the seriousness and severity of COVID-19? So let me even say this. You know, the other day I was out and somebody said to me, ah, Madam, you still they wear mask? Mm. That is, those are the, that's the, that's the, that's the mindset we have. You see, we need, I last, um, the past two weeks while I was training some healthcare professionals, I spent a long time helping people to understand the why, why we need to wear masks, why we need to put in, to put in more effort with um, the non-pharmaceutical interventions. These were, these are people who should know better, but yet we still had to reinforce that learning. When you come out of this group of people who should know better to the larger, the general population, you find that there's a whole lot more. There are people, we, we, we will try and we continue to try to give information, but you know, it's, it's also a bit difficult for people to understand the mechanism of action of the virus, hmm. the, the mode of transmission. And then of course, for some people, because their, their minds are set in, on certain things, some people have refused and will refuse to believe that this virus is real or that this pandemic is real, is not orchestrated. So for that group of people, I'm not so sure how much we can do. Mm -hmm. But for those of them who are amenable to understanding and learning, it is so, so critical that we must continue to reinforce this knowledge. I'm hoping, I'm hoping and really hoping that we eventually get it. But I will say to everyone, in whatever small space you find yourself, just ensure that the people you are able to engage with, engage with them to do the needful. It is critical at this point, or else we will stay where we, we are and we'll have a whole lot more problems on our hands. All right, before I let you go, Dr. Flora, uh, you know, I miss all the conversation going on with hydroxychloroquine and you know, self-medication, how some people are alluding to the fact that you can use certain uh, stuff and um, it's like a treatment, if you like, for COVID-19. How crucial is it that you know, Nigerians uh, you know, desist from self-medication or trying to uh, take some medicines that we know that are not yet verified to say this is the cure for COVID-19. Yeah, so before the whole hydroxychloroquine issue came up, Nigerians have always self-medicated, sadly. And so when hydroxychloroquine came on, I knew that we were going to have more problems on our hands. Mm -hmm. What can we do? We can only continue to do what we have always done, which is to continue to ask people to not self-medicate. Regarding hydroxychloroquine being a cure, I mean, it's not, there's no cure. We already know that. It's, we know there's no cure. We know that um, people being treated for, for COVID symptoms are being treated, um, giving what we call supportive treatment based and symptomatic treatment. We will, we will only continue to appeal to as many people as we can, and if possible, maybe make it possible make it possible for people not to have easy access to these drugs mm -hmm. 
hydroxychloroquine is not a bad drug. Um, it is not what it is. The, there's a whole lot of political controversy, but then that should be put aside. But it is not a drug that people should have access to carelessly. It has never been, and I don't think it should be at this point. Mm. All right. Thank you so very much, Doctor, for your thoughts. And also, do keep safe out there. Thank you. We'll try. You too. Bye. All right. Thank you very much.